Good to see this man back in the matchroom arena. We all know why. We've not seen him for a while. And we'd love to put on a big, big performance here over the next couple of days. Fedor to get this match started. Decent break. No shot on the one ball, though. Could easily, at this tournament, go over $200,000 earned this season. And, of course, he hasn't been able to play in so many of the very, very big financial rewarding events. He's won 18 tournaments in the USA in 2022, from Arizona to Delaware, from Indiana to Nevada, and all points elsewhere. He's done so much traveling across this vast land. He's played so much competitive pool. He accepted the, the hand he was given. And what a year he's put together. Tyler Steyer was beaten in the winner's qualification yesterday by SVB on this very table and the performance will need to improve wasn't good but he's got himself through loses qualification and now he finds himself in this match no more lives left single elim does have the option to put Fedor back because Fedor played the push and Tyler Steyer is in exactly the same boat as Jason Shaw was in our first match on this table. If Steyer were to lose here, then he would have to rely on a, a wild card pick for the US Moscone Cup team. What has Fedor Gorse got in mind here? He played the push, he put the ball in that position. Usually, he would. You would think already know the shot he's going to play. Is he going to try and get the cue ball over near the three? Can he get a safe one ball? Maybe on the back rail? Can he even cut this ball in? Unusual this, because he's taking a long time, but he played the push. He's not happy, Phil. I think if I'd won $200,000 in a year, I'd be happy. <laughs> but I know what you mean. Well, I wish I was a pound behind you, Phil. Couple more results for you. Chris Melling is through. The magician has beaten Jovan Bustamante 9-4. And Max isn't mad. He's delighted. Max Lechner. He's beaten Pius Labutis 9-2. Fedor Gorst possibly tried to use the six ball, but I think distance was key. Tyler Stey has got a tester. He's going to attack. His finest hour. Complete miss it. Sent the cue ball in the bucket. Ball in hand, Fedor. I did this yesterday in the opening rack, Phil. I think I was commentating with Michael. And the very first rack against Shane, he went for a real tough shot in the opening rack where he could have maybe played safe and just held off a little bit and made a mess of that one. And it cost him quite a few racks. Let's hope it doesn't this time around. I've had a couple of chats with Tyler this week, and when you speak to him, it's always apparent that somewhere in the back of his mind is that Moscow Cup inclusion. Obviously, here he's playing in the biggest individual event in the world on home soil. So the, the combined pressures of those two things are quite something to get over. 
big fan of this Q action that Fedor possesses. Just look at that, stays very still. Watch the head. No movement, very compact. His back arm through his elbow and his head. He's all in a straight line. Textbook. Look at that. Steve Davis esque film. I bet you feel like you're reminiscing, Phil. Well, the thing that Steve Davis did when he was coming through and he won six World Snooker Championships and so many other world ranking titles, his father, Bill, used to stand when he was playing the shot in practice and hold a cue over Steve's head. And if Steve's head came up slightly and touched the cue, that was a failure. And so it ingrained in Steve that upper body movement and particularly head movement is a bad thing and that's why he was so reliable in that regard. Fedor, he is so still. I'll tell you when he does move though, moves to the bank a lot to deposit first place checks, unlike your good self. <laughs> Lovely stuff. Tyler Steyer scratched and then Fedor gorged. Looked as though he's absolutely as sharp as a tack and very much up for this, as you might expect. Back on the big stage. So some more scores for you, all in the last 64, of course. Bala Alawadi from Kuwait has now taken the lead against Alex Pagulayan at 7-6. Yana Suto Camino, 7-5 upon Imran Majid. Look at the comeback from Albin Aushan. Never discount him. Last year's World Nine Ball Champion is now 6-6 with Wojciech Shevchik. Also tied up, al Qaeda and Koping Chung, 5-5. Slow going, that one, as I've said before. We've had some matches that have just begun as well. Jose Alberto Delgado, 1-0 up on Xi Chia Chen. Carlo Biardo, the defending champion, out on table 19. He's taken the first rack from Petri Makinen from Finland. And Konrad Jozushin from Poland. He's 2 1 up on Tim de Reuter from the Netherlands. Actually, Makinen has just equalised against Piardo. Now, apparently, the, the referee has decided to change the template on table one, so that gives us the opportunity to just nip over and see the conclusion of rack 11 on table two. al -Qaeda could be hitting the front here. So many stories brewing up in this last 64 stroke, last 32 in a little while, and obviously tomorrow we will start the last 16. Not only are these pool players trying to win the coveted green jacket, and arguably the biggest pool ton in the world, there's a small matter of the greatest team event lurking as well. Fair to break. What's he trying to put? Is he trying to put the yellow one or the pink four in the corner? Well, he just pops some both, Phil. Why not? You know, you talk about the Moscow Cup and the qualification implications. The analogy would be if the Open Championship in golf was the final counting event for the Ryder Cup. There's pressure aplenty. Yeah, it's always the same in the pool world, isn't it, this time of year? October. Moscone Cup's at the end of November through to the beginning of December.
Steyr arrives in the last 64 with a 3 and 0 record. He beat Cohen Bell 9-1, Alexa Pashelsh 9-7, and then Hunter Lombardo 9-2. So thin, it was a tremendous pot. Wasn't quite sure when you hit a ball extremely thin like that, your knowledge of cue ball control pretty much goes out of the window, but at least he's got the pot, and that means he's still the master of his own destiny. No position, no shape on the three, though. Yeah, you just feel like this rack is all going to be about who gets to that brown seven first. Looks like it goes in the side, but you can see from there, it's a dead combo on the nine, so... Fedor's gonna need a good safety shot here. It doesn't look like he can bank it into the left center. Yes, the eight ball might not be seeing any action in this rack. I think he could swing the cue ball around back over to the left side of the table. Use the nine, seven, and the purple five as blockers. Let's have a look. Send the three ball around. Yeah, here we go. No, I didn't like the way he played that. I thought he could have played it the other way. I thought he could have played it past the six. So the three ball comes over towards the five. Anyway, who's, who am I to argue with that man right now? Do you remember when we just had a few seconds glance at table two? Looked as though Alcady might clear up to take a 6-5 lead. He didn't. Ko Ping Chung, 6-5 in front there. Also, Bada Alawadi has took the lead over Alex Pagalayan, former US Open champ Pagalayan, trails 7 6. Alvin Ocean takes the lead, Phil. 6 3 down. He was to Wojciech Shevchek. He's now 7 6 up. Alvin Ocean, he loves matchroom pool arenas. And Tyler Steyer will love that. Full ball hook. This was Fedor's fault. He's got himself in this position through the poor safety shot. Tyler Stair has done what he needed to do and laid a good one. Kicking past the six ball, trying to pop this thread three in the corner. He'll go close to this. He was going to go above the three. Yeah, he is going above the three. He needs to play this hard then. Otherwise, he's going to miss this three ball because of the slide. Got to play this hard. Oh, Fedor, gosh. You see the pace he played it, Phil? Just give it that little bit more two-rail kick into the pocket. Lovely shot. So the 7-9 combination has been split apart. But that's a small price to pay. He'd love to play it in the corner because it's a bigger pocket, but he, he can't really get on the six, so he's got to play this into the left centre. Got to be a little bit careful. We do see these balls bounce out of the jaw. That's why he's having a good look. Yes, and of the six pockets on these tables, the two middles are the most problematic, time and again. Is he going forward two rails to play the green six in the top right? Yes, that's what he's doing. Needs to miss the six. Needs to miss the six. Now this is going to be a thin one. On day one, Phil, we we was commentating on every match. It seemed to be 9-0, 9-1, 9-2. I'm just looking at Q score. The first four matches that I'm looking at, 
There's one rack between all four matches. Oh yeah, the competitive juices are now flowing. The minnows have departed. It's giants, legends, up and comers. They're the ones who are left. And also, what an international mix as well. 27 countries were represented in the last 64 from five continents. Well, you should have trivia question there. I would have never guessed that many. That is, uh, that is incredible. The man who's been on a seemingly never-ending road trip all around America in 2022 is already on the road to victory here. He leads Tyler Steyer 2-0, and boy, does he look good. Still plenty of other last 64 matches going on, including David Alcady against Copin Chung, and the Spaniard has just hung the five ball. Can Co move two racks ahead yeah and it's all right missing balls but missing balls at this stage of the match can cost you matches young german moritz newhausen he's playing mustafa oh now nah, he's one nil up speak about him highly practices with joshua phyllis still a very young man i think 18 years of age maybe 19 class class player how, how far can he go in this year's event as soon as those vital balls go in we'll let you know now back to table one and rack three this is going to be dry and it's a good job the five balls there because the one nine combo looked to be lined up nicely. Got to be careful with this rack. Wonder if the one ball passes that green six. Obviously not. There's a few safety options. Well, looks like there's a bit of a pocket there. Yeah, there's definitely some form of route to the pocket. I don't think it's a, a full pocket, of course. terrible shot didn't fancy the pot decided to be patient this time and he's left the gap Also, a poor safety. The one nine is definitely going towards that centre pocket. Also, yeah, just where he's pointing his cue tip, you can flick off the edge of the one. Get the cue ball there, to all over towards the eight ball. Yeah, there you can see the one nine combo. It's not that far away. Because the cue ball's so close, that's why he's not taking this on. This is all about speed. 
I mean, that's nicely done, especially if it sits on top of the eight. It's a good shot. This is going to be tricky to hit. While he's working out his options, I can tell you Roland Garcia from the Philippines is through. He's beaten Jesus Atencio 9-4. He was my dark horse, Atencio. of movement call bank shot looks to be set up okay for Tyler you can actually play the bank draw down the table for a possible 2-9 combo as well If he overruns the position for the combo, he can shoot the two ball up into the top left as well. Players like to attack the bank shot here. They're good at these type of shots. You expect to make these bank shots. Here comes the combo. This is a big shot, just because it, it will settle Tyler down. He's not got good memories on this centre court table. And instead, it's going to make him feel edgy. They just simply have to, they have to go at this level. They just cannot be missed. But uh, Alawadi is on the hill over Alex Pagulay in 8-7 that match. That's a close one. Wojciech Shevchek's tied the match up against Albin, 7-7. Junior event started today as well. You can see the scores, the live scores on qscore.com. 64 juniors, 17 and under. Phil, have you been over and had a nosy? As soon as I got here this morning, I went over. I was watching a girl, 11, I believe she was 11, Savannah Easton. She can play. Yeah, heard good reports about her and some of the some of the youngsters. The, the enthusiasm, that's what gets you, isn't it? They were here so early this morning, couldn't wait to get going. Yeah, it's good to see and it's a good addition as well, I think. Playing alongside, you know, they're playing on the tables just to the right hand side of the table we are watching. So they're pretty much playing alongside this, this major US Open, the 45th US Open nine ball championships. These are the juniors practicing just at the bottom of the screen. And the final of the junior event, we will be showcasing that. Do we know who's in the combat for that match? Phil? We don't yet. Well, you're the boss. Well, I'm not junior, I'm senior in terms of age, so maybe it should be Michael. Yeah, Feder Ghost has let Tyler off in this rank. It was a good chance to punish him keep the heat it's like a game of tennis is the mind when playing a game of pool your emotions go up and down back and forth
in many racks if you take on a combo early and miss it. It costs you, but it doesn't look as though it's going to cost Steyer here. Misjudged that 2-9, didn't he? But given a, a second opportunity. Defending champion, he's out there battling, he leads Petri Makinen 2-1. And in a few seconds' time, 2-1 is going to be the scoreline here. They say you never feel truly settled until you have a rack on the board. Tyler Steyer has broken his duck. Fedor Gorscht leads 2-1 now. So let, let me give you a full rundown of these other scores. All in the last 64. Bada Alawadi. On the hill, 8-7 up on Alex Pagulayan. Yana Suter Camino from Spain, 7-6 up on Imran Majid now. Wojciech Shevchik and Albin Aushin, 7-7. As we suspected when he hung that five ball, David Alcady has fallen 7-5 behind against Koping Chung. Duong Kwok Huang leads Shane Walford 2-0. Now, Walford's in exactly the same position in that match as Tyler Steyer is in this one. If he were to lose, then his hopes of automatic qualification for the US Moscone Cup team are over. Yeah, I'm sure our fellow work colleague USA's captain Jeremy Jones, he'll be out there somewhere watching. I'm sure he's watching Tyler Steyer and he'll be sweating the rest of the Americans' campaign. That's a good break. Now he's the one ball in the side and the wing ball. Yeah, Steyer arrived here 10th on the US Moscone Cup rankings. Only the top three get in for sure, and already one of them. Shane Van Boning has put his place. Two more slots will be filled after this. And right now, Oscar Dominguez is number two. Styler, or Skyler Woodward is number three. This will work nicely. It's a very good safety shot. Seven balls causing a few problems. That's why Fedor's gone for the short stick. Going out ball. Looks like he's playing the full table jump bank. Or is he trying to get the key ball over towards that cluster on the right? It's the jump bank. Good effort. In terms of tournament wins, Gorscht is way ahead of Steyer on their respective CVs. Steyer's biggest individual success, funnily enough, was in Gorscht's homeland. He won the Kremlin Cup in Moscow in 2019. We were talking about the juniors being here, Carl, and I think it's fair to say Tyler Steyer was a relatively late comer to this sport. Didn't take a pool until he was 14 years old from the great state of Wisconsin. He's 27 now. A 
This looks to be a good effort. Oh, it is a very good effort, and he's got the cue ball welded onto the eight ball. So that's going to make life very difficult hitting this. Imran Majid ties the matchup. 7-7 seven, seven over Camino. It's a day when some players' hearts will be broken. You get this far, you start to think big. Just sat here having a nose around the room. SVB is just to the right of me, about 10 feet away. One of the juniors has just walked up to him with his cue case. That's Shane to sign his bag. What a moment for these juniors and what a hit. Oh, that'll do nicely. Maybe he's left the bank. enough of this to bank it so he's playing a little thin edge trying to use the nine ball as a blocker and Tyler's played a couple of nice safety shots so far in this match to use a, a poker term there's a, a tell with Tyler Steyer he does tend to go quite rosy in the cheeks when he's under pressure and this is the kind of match that's maximum pressure a because of the quality of his opponent b because of the tournament he's in and c because of the circumstance with us with those Moscone cup points Desperate to make his first Moscone. Well, he's down 3 zero, zero rather, in his match against Don Quoc Hang from Vietnam. Didn't hit that how he was wanting to. He was trying to kick the top table and move the cue ball down at the bottom. Big score one to tell you about. Wojciech Shevchik has arrived on the hill against Albin Aushin at 8 7. He's last year's world nine ball champion going to depart. Someone else who's departed, Alex Pagalayan, former champ, he's a goner. He lost 9 7. Alawadi. Alawadi will now play Chris Mellin. here but it shouldn't really be that much of an issue no it's going into a huge pocket from that angle this is unmissable I like the determination from Tyler Steyer the first couple of racks it looked as though Gorscht had the capacity to to pull away to a very convincing victory. But Steyer has been stubborn.
And I think it's Tyler Steyer's tenacity that makes him such an attractive prospect for the US Moscone Cup team, even if he doesn't get in there in one of those three automatic berths. He's prime wild card talent, as far as I'm concerned, Cole. Yeah, I mean, last year he had a... It, it wasn't his best Moscone Cup, but he's tasted victory in the event. Been on the winning team, so he knows what it's like to lift the cup and got good work ethic. Treats it very professional. Cues a decent ball, so I think when you look around, he's always going to be in contention. This to tie this match up. It's been a bit of a slow burner, hasn't it? But the balls and the safety's been good. It's 2 2. And you can't fault the attitude of Tyler Steyer. He has been on two winning Moscow Cup teams in 2018 and again the following year. And now he's got two racks on the board here. It is all tied up with Fedor Gorscht. So what about these other matches? Yanis Suto Camino and Imran Majid, 7-7. Wojciech Shevchik, 8-7 up on Albin Aushin. Now Cope in Chung is on the hill against David Alcady. When Tyler Steyer won that big Kremlin Cup in Moscow, it was Alcady he beat in the final. Alcady now needs the next four racks to stand any chance of making the final here. Coping Chung in command there. As Carl was saying, Duong Kwok Huang from <coughs> Vietnam. He's made a great start against Walford, 4-0 up. Jose Alberto Delgado, 4-2 up on Chi Chia Chen. Moritz Neuhausen and Mustafa Alner, 2-2. Naoki Oi, the great court jester from Japan. 3-1 up on Tafe and Tabor. And Carlo Biardo, the defending champion. 3-3 now with Petri Makinen. Breaking well though, that is always going to serve you well. Can't do nothing about that. The eight ball was coming and stopped. Tyler from potting this two ball. Next up, by the way, on table one. What an intriguing contest. Shane Van Boning in pursuit of that record sixth US Open title is taking on Alexander Kazakis. Good effort. Don't blame him for having to go at the cross bank. He's left this for Fedor. Fedor's got to try and navigate good cue ball control. Just because where the Browns seven and the purple five are, he's got to try and get past them somehow. Joshua Filler is just starting his match. He's playing South Africa's Kyle. Akalu, 2019 champ, of course, Joshua. I tell you what, Gorscht will not be happy with that one, will he? Okay, he might have just about got away with it, but it was a little dicey.
back in decent position now. Can go forward with the cue ball. Wants to land on the left side of the purple five. Yeah, look where he's put the cue ball. Because if you land a little bit short, you're going to have to start messing around hitting the brown seven. Cue ball's just run a little bit far, so he's got to kind of jack up now. Land anywhere with the cue ball. You'll have a shot on this nine. Make sure you pop the ball. You can see he's bridging over. Not allowed to touch the nine with the cue. That would be a foul. Good shot. Phil. Wojciech Shevchek, Alvin Ocean, it's been 8-7 for a long time. Must be a big safety battle going on over there. And every shot will be so intensely scrutinised. Gorscht back in front at 3-2. Tyler Steyer broke off pretty efficiently, I thought. He wasn't the beneficiary of the best of luck. And... That indirectly led to the, the Russian going in front at 3 2 again. Coping Chung over on the other table. Let's call it our YouTube table, t table rather. You can watch that match there, where you could watch it. Coping Chung has beaten David Alcady. Alcady's out. Coping Chung joins his brother in the last 32. And the third brother played in this tournament as well. And at times he looked really good. He beat Elliot Sanderson 8 0 in one losers round match yesterday. And he broke and ran six racks goal. They're quite a family, the co playing brothers. Ball's close to the scratch. Oh, he stays alive. Hits both points. You know that old cliche call about this game being one of fractions. Well, it was graphically illustrated there. Look at that. Right around the rim, but staying above ground. Well, I have a feeling Alvin Ocean has been beat I've got Q score in front of me checking the scores and his match has disappeared so we will get confirmation of that for you shortly but I think it's the end of Alvin Ocean's campaign never won the US Open it's the one title that eludes him I don't even think he's been that deep in the tournament Phil well he's won two matchroom events in 2022 Premier League pool and European Open but we have confirmation now Alban Auschen has been beaten by his Polish opponent Wojciech Szewczyk ball in the same shot here oh he's made a mess of this he's not got close to any of the balls
after such a steady start in winning the first two racks, Gorsh has started to make a, a few extremely uncharacteristic errors. And now what an opportunity for Steyr to equalise for the second time. Well, we're on table two, the players are just warming up. If you want to watch that table head over to Matchroom Pro YouTube channel, that match will be Eklund Katchi against Johan Chua. What an imposing figure he is. Eklund Katchi really, really tall with that black beard and the intense stare. Joshua Fuller has quickly taken a 2-0 lead over Kyle Akalu. And having seen Akalu play in the World Cup, I think Fuller is the biggest certainty to come through in this round out of all of them. Good. Looks very good. He does have a tendency, Phil, doesn't he, now and again, to throw a weird miss in like that. Well, that was plain for all to see. That was a classic deceleration, and that's why he overcut the green six ball by so much. Very poor. Using the eight ball as a blocker. has the ability to beat Gorscht, there's no doubt about it. But he can't afford to make mistakes, like the, the missed 2-9 combination earlier in the match, and now that's six going astray. Joshua Filler, he's off to a flyer. He wins the opening two racks in no time. Kyle Akalu, of course, is big second favourite in that match. Interesting match starting over on table 21 from Mario He against Chris Reinhold. A lot of European players are playing the Americans and they're all vying for spots in their teams in Las Vegas. Yeah, Reinhold very much in the Moscow Cup conversation. If he could snap this title off and become US Open champion. The Moscone Cup beckons for him. Maybe even if he gets to the final. Oh, this is delightful. He's actually played it that way. Yeah, he might not have got the hook. Fair enough, but what a great effort. Kick and stick three rails.
Yeah, after that poor attempt on the six previously, that was excellent. But at least he's making Federal play a shot, isn't he? At least, at least he's got a Q1 off the rail. Yeah, the six is near the pocket, but it's better than giving ball in, haven't they? for Steyer. It's funny, sometimes the ball just stays over and other times, for some reason, it falls. I mean, let's be honest, should never have gone in. The polish, the new cloth, the lights, all help that ball fall. Fedor Gorscht, 4-2 up. But he's hard skipped a beat on the six. And really, that rack was all about the six because it was Steyer who missed it initially. And we thought that Gorscht had as well, but it just about went in. So these last 64 matches continuing on. Yanis Suto Camino on the hill against Imran Majid at 8 7. Duong Kwok Wang, 4 1 up on Shane Walford. Walford winning rack five. Che Chia Chen and Jose Alberto Delgado from Spain, 4 4. Moritz Neuhausen and Mustafa Alna, 3 3. Naoki Oi, great to see him playing well. What a superb addition he is to any tournament he's in. Such good fun, especially in the interviews afterwards. He's 5 2 up on Tafe and Tabor. Carlo Biardo, the defending champion, 4-3 up on Petri Makinen and Konrad Yazushin on the hill against Tim De Reuter at 8-5. Key ball scratched. He's been about 50% with his break. Sometimes he's hit them good. Other times, no good. Here's another look. Trying to put the one in the side pocket. Just goes a little low. It's not an easy shot to attempt, but that is the shot that most of the pros are trying to do. Maybe we were writing off Kyle Ackerley a little too early. He's just won the third rack. Joshua Fuller's lead trimmed to 2-1. Heard a loud cheer in the background. That was Jonas Suto Camino. He beats Imran Majed. He does indeed, Carl. We've just had official confirmation of that. Suto Camino going through 9 7. So all of the matches that began it. 10 o'clock local time, two and a half hours ago, are now complete. He's very deliberate, there is Tyler Steyer. He puts every ounce of his being into every single shot. But it's one of those players who are tough to shake off. And the desire that burns inside, I think, is ideally suited for the Moscone. I really do. But, of course, the 
the ultimate decision, if a decision needs to be made, lies with our colleague Jeremy Jones. If he could win this match and go deep in the US Open, no decision would be called for because Steyer would qualify for the US team as of right. to go forward now because drawing the cue ball back may just pull it a bit further down the right of the table than he would have liked so let's see where he ends on the cue ball and then he sees him go forward two rails just got to be careful you don't overdo this and scratch in the left centre that would be disastrous he's under it this you know under it, it now it's a thin one. So from what looked like guaranteed out, there's work to do. He's got to pot this. He's not 100% sure where the cue ball's going to finish. He may end up on the rail and leave a tricky nine. Just got the impression he dug into the cue ball slightly in following through. That's why he didn't make the journey. Oh, that's a big moment in the match call. Huge, huge moments in the match. He has missed some balls in this match, some key balls, and I'm not so sure about <laughs> this Moscone Cup you keep buying for, Phil, <laughs> because they're just rats. You've got to win. Surely you've got to win them rats. Deal on the nine. Tester for Ghost. We've seen these missed over the years. 50 yard line. That's a reference for those who don't know to American football. Basically, the halfway line, isn't it? In between. Gorsh, though, is the epitome of reliability in that kind of situation. In goes the nine. The eight didn't go in for Tyler Steyer, and that means instead of it being 4-3, it is 5-2 to Gorsh. He's a little more than halfway to a place in the last 32. Just talked about the American football reference there, Carl. We're very close to Philadelphia here, around a, an hour's drive away. And there's great excitement this weekend because they're playing the, the Dallas Cowboys. That's a rivalry anyway, a real intense rivalry. And the, the Eagles are 5-0. and oh, Dallas Cowboys 4-1. and one, So lots depending on it. And of course the, the Phillies, the Philadelphia Phillies are in the playoffs as well in Major League Baseball. Right now this small section of the earth is a, a sporting epicenter you seem quite underwhelmed there when i was talking about american football and baseball i just don't have a clue of any of the teams phil i don't know what it means don't follow any of it you may as well have been talking a different language OK, well, I'll talk your language here, Cole. It's a, a dry break, and so Steyer has the opportunity to make amends. And that's two dry breaks now for Gorscht in the match. No jokes aside, I know you like your American sports, Phil. Well, baseball in particular. It's the, the great love of my... The Anaheim Angels, or the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim, whichever you like to call them alongside with the American cuisine as well. Oh yes, far too much. I don't walk to work here, I roll to work. Oh 
Okay, one apiece. A ball's missed. That have somehow fallen in the pocket. Ghost had one earlier on. Now Tyler. Tyler just looks edgy. These misses are having an effect. It's a tale of two different kind of stories here in the last 64. Last year's runner-up Alyusha Shiap is trailing Sanjin Pilovanovic 5-1. Sanjin Pilovanovic played Oscar Dominguez in the knockout stage. Hill Hill and missed a sick ball by an absolute mile. It looked physically impossible to miss it by that much, but he's put that to the back of his head and he now leads 5-1 over last year's runner-up. Last year's winner, our defending champion, Kylo Biado. He's going along nicely. 6-3 over Petri Makinen. Good to see Sanyin doing so well, though. I think the biggest talking point this week so far has been when Joey Tate took the balls in the incorrect order in his match against Shane Van Boning. His first round match at a very crucial stage, it was 7-7. So he'll always be remembered for that. Sanyin Filovanovic will be remembered for prematurely celebrating in the European Nine Ball Championship final last year. He celebrated as though he'd won and then missed the nine ball. How do you feel? Not ideal, this. 35 balls potted, 34 for Fedor, but the biggest number is 5-2 to Fedor, bank shot coming up, well, I was just having a look, you may be wondering why is he not potting it on the right hand side, but that's a little tight. Maybe he's played a two-way bank into the corner. Let's give him the benefit of the doubt. Let's not be mean today. I'm pretty convinced he took it on. Application of side there. Now, if this nine ball goes in, I'm not going to say it will make amends for what happened in the previous rack, but it will make him feel a whole lot better, and rightfully so. Very good indeed. Fedor Gorscht broke dry. Tyler Steyer in my opinion, played his best rack of the match so far. Steyer has got stickability, and now he trails only 5-3. Yeah, there'll be two interested spectators of this match as well. You've got Christina to catch, one of the top lady players. She's the girlfriend of Fedor Gorst, and you've got Margarita Fefalova, who's the wife of Tyler Steyer, so it could be a good mixed doubles matchup. Yes, and there's Christina watching from the front row. She played well here, played five matches, won three of them. Do you clean the 
Yeah, she very nearly qualified. Just came up short, lost to Alvin Ocean in the loser's qualification round. But as we know from roughly about half an hour ago, Alvin Ocean is also out. So his nightmare continues at the US Open. It's the one ton that has eluded his trophy cabinet. He's the, the Sam Sneed of Pools US Open. I'll tell you about that when Steyer has broken off here. Oh, that looked like being dry, but the five ball was just about nudged in. Take a look at this. The one doing Steyer a massive favour. Yeah, the, the Sam Snead reference was about the famous old golfer who won all of the majors apart from the US Open, and he had so many chances to win it, so many wonderful chances and couldn't quite get the trophy in his hands. Tyler's having a go at this kick shot. What he's doing here is he's using what we call the diamond system. He might have his own little way of doing it, but if you line up like the pocket to one of the, the diamonds, you, you scratch in the corner, the players know these little funky things on a 9x5 tool table. Not guaranteed to pop this ball, though. Not a good start for the Americans at the moment. Shane Wolford trails 6-2 in his match over Don Quoc Hong from Vietnam. Of course, Tyler Stey is down 5-3. Dominguez has just started his match, so it's 0-0 over Poland's Kubica. Chris Reinhold is 2-0 down over Mario He. Oh, the scrap just come. He decided to go out, all out attack. Didn't have to, could have played a push. The phrase curate's egg comes to mind. It means mixed bag. And that's been the case for Tyler Steyer in this match. Some really good stuff. And then all of a sudden, something to, to damage his chances. Favourite Nayuki always on the hill, 8 2. And the taste on Tava from Germany. Tim De Ruta from Holland, he was down in his match against Conrad Yushushun. Very talented lefty from Poland, is Conrad. 8 6 in that one. Well, I can engage in one-upmanship here. Yushushun has just won 9 6. So another pole goes through. Collectively, they are a force, aren't they? It's been a slow, slow match, this one, hasn't it? We've played eight racks. Both players are methodical, but balls have been a little tricky. There's been quite a few safety shots and good kick shots. And just when Tyler's trying to claw one back, to get one behind. Where are you three behind? It's a funny one because you win a rack, you get two behind, then if you lose the next one, you, you feel like you've got a big mountain to climb again. Fedor will know this. He's the, the one in front. But the story seems to be Fedor wins the rack, goes three in front, breaks terrible. Tyler steals the rack on the Fedor break and then Seems to play a role for one in the next rack. That's so far what we've spotted. Ralph Suke is warming up over to the right of me, Phil. Who does he play? He's still going there. Sly old fox that he is. Well, old is the... <laughs> the most pertinent word really because he's 53 won last year's 
nine ball at the European Championship, so can still do it. And Fedor Gorscht, though, certainly can still do it. He's 6-3 up, and that means he needs only three more racks to go through. One thing I will say, he will need to improve, as you said, Cole, on his break-off, because if he does go through, more than likely in the next round, he will play in a blockbuster clash. Joshua Filler, Filler leading 4-1 against South Africa's Kyle Akalu at the moment. Yeah, what a matchup that could be. I know we're getting a little ahead of ourselves, but Filler goes two of the young guns. Rivalry for oh, the next 20, 25 years, easily. Bit of needle in that match as well. Pray tell. Well, there's not. I'm just trying to spice it up a little bit more. <laughs> You're a bad man, you are, Carl. You can't leave me hanging like that. I was thinking, oh, something juicy here, let me know. And then it turns out it's all, all a fabrication. We'll save it for the match if it happens. I'm sure it'll be on the uh, centre stage. Goes to break, needs a good one. I think he switched over to the other side of the table as well. Just not happening on the break. This is actually turning out to be the story of this whole match. Just a, a correction on my part. I said that Ralph Suke had won the, the European nine ball championship. It was the eight ball championship. I knew I was incorrect, so I just checked. Yeah, I knew you was incorrect, but I thought I'll let you I'll let you uh, swell in your own. <laughs> Look at this. Successful breaks. Gorscht, even though he's doubling up on Steyr at the moment, is not having the best of times when it comes to that break-off. It's something in between matches. If he does prevail, he will need to sort out. Well, the Naoki Oi joke is on Tafun Tabor. Oi is through, 9-2. And it looks as though Oi in the next round will play Carlo Biardo, the title holder. Biardo 8-3 up now on Petri Makinen. Last year's semi-finals, Biardo Oi. Nicely done there. Draws his rock for position on the three. All the balls are sat there nice, so it's hard to see how this rack could go wrong. One thing about Steyer, he could never be accused of giving less than 100%. Concentration levels on every shot at the max.
Big shot coming up. Maybe I'll take that back if he's playing for the combo. If the combo's dead set in the left centre, there's a case for playing it. Eight goals in corners, though. Yeah, I believe he's played for this combo. There you go. And this judged an earlier 2-9 combination, but this one looks meat and drink. Tyler Steyer won't go away, will he? Tenacious. He's back to only 6-4 behind. Well, this is what we've been talking about, Phil. This has literally been the story of the match. Gorse goes, goes three in front, breaks dry. Tyler Steyer wins the rack, but then the very next rack maybe just makes an error. It was the kick scratch in the previous one, wasn't it? Then I think it was a missed ball earlier on. If Tyler Steyer can win this rack now, maybe, maybe, Ghost is under it then. Yeah, Steyer needs to put in a, a lovely break here and see how it goes. Now, plenty of other matches going on. Duong Kwa Kwang, 6-3 up on Shane Walford, who's playing for his Moscone Cup life. Johan Schuer, 2-0 up, early doors against Eklund Kachi. Joshua Filler, as we fully expected, dominating against Kyle Akalu with 6-1. Little further down, Kyle Biardo on the hill against Petri Makinen, 8-4. And Samuel Pilovanovic, 6-1 up on Aloysius Shapsa, the runner-up last year, is in serious, serious trouble. There's a big, big difference in the break shot of both these players. Steyer is making the one ball in the side every time. Ghost, he's dry breaking. This is a prime example why the break rule has been changed to this format. Because now, when you're breaking, there's more skill involved. The old break, Phil Yates could break. The new break, he can't. What a gratuitous criticism of a poor innocent colleague now this is the chance this is the chance you've done the hard work you've made the long two you plumb on the three all the balls are sat there can you finally get it back to one behind well it's a golden chance let's not beat about the bush I'm going to stick my neck out on the line. If he wins this rack, I think he goes favourite for the match. It will only be himself to blame if he doesn't go on to win it. A mistake of some sort. He's potted more balls. He's broke better. But, now and again, he seems to throw in a miss. Can he hold himself together? Jose Alberto Delgado ties the match up 6-6. Of course, he got to the semi-finals of our last major, the European Open. Fantastic run there from Jose. Can he go on better this week? Yes, he was little known before Fulda. Now he's got the taste for the big time, clearly. Jose Alberto Delgado used to go out with Tyler Steyer's wife. That could be an interesting matchup, Phil, if these two players meet in the next round or something. Where are they in the draw? Let's have a look. Again, I'll say you're a bad man, you are. And I think this is why, for me, his Moscone Cup credentials 
stand up. He's a fighter. Steyer has the, the nine ball for the first break and run of the match. And, of course, this is Rack 11. It's not been break-off brilliance. But Tyler Steyer is determination personified. And now the lead of Fedor Gorscht has been reduced to only 6-5. We're getting to the, the tail end of the, the last 64 now. We've got one more match for you in the round on table one. Coming up after this, it is Shane Van Boning against Alexander Kazakis. But in the last 32, some matches in place already. Here you can see Chris Melling against Bada Alawadi, Lee Van Corteza. The conqueror of Jason Shaw up against Copin Yi, Max Lechner, Giannis Suto Camino, an all European clash there. Wojciech Shevchik and Roland Garcia. Coping Chung against Neil Svein. Youth against experience. And Abdullah Al Yusuf against Yanni Uski, who remarkably has won his last two matches 9 0, including a whitewash yesterday of Billy Thorpe. So these are the latest scores in the last 64. Carlo Viardo remains on the hill against Petri Makinen. Mario He has taken an early 3-1 lead over Chris Reinholdt. Yet another US Moscone Cup possible. And Mustafa Alna, the only player from Turkey in the last 64. He finds himself 7-3 up on Moritz Neuhausen from Germany. Radislav Babica has made a good start against Oscar Dominguez. 2-0 to the pole. Joshua Filler has just lost another rack, but he's still in command at 6-2 over Kyle Akalu. And Duang Kwok Wang now leads Shane Walford. 7-3. The backbone of Wang's lead was securing the first four racks. Now this is the action over on table two, which you can see on the Matchroom Pool YouTube channel. Behind Schur from the Philippines against Albania's Eklund Kachi. And it is the latter at the table. Looking almost certain, Carl, to draw level at 2 2. Eklund Kachi's been to the final of the US Open, not the matching pool version, it was the older version that used to be in Chesapeake, Virginia. So me and Kachi have got something in common, we both lost there. Jason Shaw beat Kapchi. Who knows how to get to the final? Johan Chua, he was my my dark horse, if you could put him in that bracket, I suppose you could. Kyle Obiado, defending champion, is through. 9-4 over Makinen, so he finds himself in the last 32. And it will be a repeat of last year's semi-finals, where he faces Naoki Oi. Back over to table one Tyler Steyer has finally got to just one behind in this match he's been breaking better he's potted more balls than Fedogorst he still trails by one though Gorsh has left the arena so Steyer is doing the same this is the Harrah's Resort and Casino in Atlantic City, New Jersey. 
we were here last year for the first US Open in this town. That was a, an unqualified success. And here on day four of the renewal, we can say this one also has been tremendous. All tickets for the final day, by the way, have been sold. It should be a tremendous atmosphere as the players search for, in many people's eyes, the most prestigious title in World Pool. So, Carl, I believe it was seven years ago you lost in the final. Feelings afterwards, total dejection? No, I wasn't too bad, to be honest, Phil, because I felt like I, I didn't really get many visits. I think I missed the ball to maybe get three behind from quite a big deficit and the break was really tough that year I remember it was a similar break format to this and Kevin Cheng seemed to have the break absolutely a bit like what we're seeing here I was fed on course and he was Tyler's Dyer yeah so in the end it was just one of them matches and even though I lost I was still very proud to go deep and get to the final because it's such a tough event to to go deep in we will keep you informed about table two, of course, as we always do. Now, though, back to the action on table one, where the, the Steyr break-off continues to be A-OK. -okay. One in the side, clear shot on the two, three in the open, bingo. Yeah, going back to that US Open, probably a good thing I didn't win, because I don't think the green jacket would fit these days. Might fit me some, but it's not going to fit me. We are scripting this match out, aren't we? We're sat here with our cup of tea and we can just sense what's going on here. Again, Tyler makes the one ball on the break. Gorst has got work to do if he's going to get back to the table and win a rack. It's all going to be about the break shot. Hampered queuing because of the purple five, but he can just float up through the gap, I believe, in between the eight and the nine. If he can play with right spin, he may go two rails and come through the gap that way. That gives him a big margin for error. Let's see what shot he likes to play. I oh, know he can't go forward two rails, it's too steep, so he's going to go one rail up in between the two balls. Oh, don't hit the nine. Has he got a shot? He's held his hand up, so he must be able to see the potting angle. It's a funny camera angle, that. It's where well blind he can't pot that fourth ball from here. certainly get through to a piece of it well he held his hand up but I'm not really sure why because he couldn't see the potting angle yeah that was rather confusing wasn't it I think it was more exasperation than apology having seen that how big is this rack that positional shot gonna play on this match now it was a glorious chance to tie this match up he hasn't took it first time of asking He's still got a chance though Fedor's under the Koshi, how do you play safe? Where do you go with this four ball? Yeah, the seven ball is lurking in the corner to get a good cue ball. But where does the four go? I'll tell you what I was with last night, Phil. 1997 US Open champion. <coughs> Who is that? Little trivia question. Uh, don't be looking on your computer. I've seen you. I was having a beer in the bar with the 1997 US Open champion. Who was I with? If you get this right, I'll buy you a biscuit. Or even one of them big cheesecakes in the deli. I know you've been having a few of them this yeah, week. Yeah, now that's an incentive, yeah. Mm. But if you don't, you buy me. And you only get one guess. He's not played the bank 
but he's kind of played the bank in a way that he knows the six and the five are there. That is percentage play at its finest. Your time is ticking out, Phil. I can't believe I've got you with this one. I bet Michael McMullen won't let me down. Oh, no. We know it's not Earl Strickland because, very sadly, he was unable to attend the tournament because of testing positive for COVID-19 and feeling rather grotty as a consequence. So we know it's not him. Would it be Johnny Archer? You owe me cheesecake. It was Rodney Morris. Wow, wow. I haven't seen him around, you see. Well, I thought that's where I might come unstuck because I thought if you've seen him floating around, Oh, that cheesecake is going to taste sweet later. There'll be some moths flying out of your wallet later. Where are the ball's going to finish? Where are they going to finish? He's got to go airborne. Fedogost is known to be one of the top three jump shot players in the world. He's got to come with a good one here. He's got to get the cue ball jumping quick, and he's got to land it on the four. He's not got a lot of landing space. He literally has no landing area to land this cue ball on the slate. So this shot, you have to fly the cue ball over and land it on the pink ball. Things can go wrong with this. You have to hit this on a dime. Oh, Gorst has played a beauty. Tyler Steyer tapping the knee in appreciation. I'm sure we'll get another look at that. Watch the cue ball as he lands it on top of the pink four ball. Great champions bring great shots when the need arises. Shane Walford will have to rely on a Moscone Cup wildcard pick because he's been beaten 9-3 by Duang Kwok Wang. I bet our colleague Michael McMullen is, is knee-deep in paper somewhere in this room doing all the possible Moscone Cup permutations. Yeah, top three off the rankings get in after this tournament and Walford came here fourth and Skylar Woodward and Oscar Dominguez have matched him by reaching the last 64 so I think that's that the jump shot here from Gorscht it could be so so significant Positional shot from Tyler at the start of this rack where it started to go wrong. And that positional shot there is going to win Ghost the 12th rack to extend the lead. But it's not so much about this ball or this rack, it's about the Federal Ghost break. Can he find a good break? Yeah, going airborne made the difference in rack 12. But eventually, if you keep breaking off with ineffectiveness, you're going to get caught out. You might say, Carl, law of averages suggests he's going to break off well, 
eventually. Joshua Filler is flying, he's on the hill. 8-2 over Kyle Akalou. You would think Kyle Akalou is going to exit the tournament. There you see Jose Alberto Delgado trails 8-6. Oscar Dominguez, well, he's lost the opening three against the veteran pole, Radoslav Abika. And one shout out to Duan Kwok Wang, who in beating Shane Walford 9-3, as I said before, had four break and run outs. Under this break format, that's pretty good going. Don't discount the, the chances of the Vietnamese player. Well, I've had a message saying we're both wrong. So Rodney Morris won it in 96. Rodney told me 97 last night. The man doesn't know when he won. So who did win it in 97? If it was Archer, you owe me a whole cheesecake. Oh, I hope it's not Archer. Get on Wikipedia fast. <laughs> this could hurt. Unless Rodney did tell me 96. The beers were flowing last night. I was mixing with the fans, having a good laugh, actually. Last Don't night. squirm out of it, Carl. Don't squirm out of it. It was Earl Strickland. Ooh, All you, bets are off. Oh, you, 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 did, you nearly said to Earl as well, didn't you? Who did he beat in the final? Yeah, but you said you saw him last night having a drink with him, and I knew he wasn't here, so that's why I discounted it. Oh, yes, fair enough. Who did Earl beat in the final that year? Efren Reyes. Anyway, congrats to Roy Payton, who got the answer right, but I'm sure he looked on online, so... I'm afraid you won't be getting a cheesecake off me or Phil. Got getting a little bit too excited over cheesecake here. I didn't watch the break. Is this the result off the break, Phil? Did you see it? So he made a ball. But look, it's just a mess, isn't it? The table's just messy. Playing push. He's having no piece of this. Tyler's got the option. Play or pass. Sanjin Perlovanovic. Well, he's absolutely flying over Yap. 8-1. Yap needs a miracle. Steyer knows if he makes a mistake here, it could be his last mistake of the entire match. The nerve ends are raw for both players. Is Fedor going to try and swing the cue ball around the table and, and, and get this green, brown and eight ball? Use that as some sort of blocker somewhere? Let me very quickly tell you, Joshua Filler has quickly won 9-2 against Kyle Akalu, as we fully anticipated before a ball was struck. Plays the winner of this match as well in the last 32. And he's banked it into the balls and he's used the five ball as a blocker. Smart shot indeed. Tyler Steyer didn't spot that one. He got out thought. The stakes have risen. The pace of play has slowed down. Look at table two. We started here at 10 o'clock local time. Three and a quarter hours later, we've had one completed match and five racks completed in the next. 
it's an indication of just what's at stake. Huge prize money, massive world ranking points, and perhaps most important of all, the opportunity to create nine ball pool history. And there's confirmation. Slow going on table two, but now I'm sure is at the table with a really good chance to forge four to ahead of Eklund Kachi. Of course, the players can't be so ponderous tomorrow when the 30-second shot clock is introduced for the last 16. Delightful vision there from the American. Kicks the six ball straight in the corner. Here's another look. What's he face with here? Maybe a carom. I don't think the one passes the eight, so he can play the one on the left edge with the cue ball, and the cue ball pots the eight. Could play safety as well. safe don't blame him it's an easy hit for Gorse though Gorse can go I think he can go two rails so can he get the cue ball let's just have a look at this can he get the cue ball off two rails kick and stick behind the eight maybe he can go one way looking at isn't he that's what he's having a good old look at he'll fancy making a good job of this as well especially if he can stretch over he's right-handed so maybe he can stretch over and reach the rail doesn't want him using the bridge Is the nine ball going to help him? I believe it has. Oh my, oh my, oh my. Another big moment. Nothing has come to the help of Alosha Shap. What a difference a year makes. He's been beaten by Sanyan Perlovanovic 9-1. As we see, what could turn out to be a golden slice of good fortune. Yeah, so Yap from Singapore, last year's beaten finalist. Goes out of the event this time in the last 64. two rails that's what he's playing if he hits the left side of the rail 
he's got to be a little bit careful. Could maybe scrap in the left corner. I think the cue ball can just squeeze past that too. But he can also get a hook from down there. Let's see where this ends up. Needs to hit a rail. A ball needs to hit a rail after contact. It's going to be a foul ball in hand. That hurts, doesn't it? What a moment. Gorged seven pots away from reaching the hill. Just planning his attack from here. But for Tyler Steyer, no real solace, no obvious obstacles for his opponent. Luke Snooker, wasn't it, from Ghost? That has given him this chance to get on the hill. Suke Francisco Sanchez Ruiz are finally getting their match started. tension out there it's been that kind of match neither player able to establish a, a sustained flow just a little stop shot Oh my word, what has he done there? All he had to do is play a stop shot. Why is he drawing the cue ball back? A simply extraordinary miss. A little too much side on the previous pot as well. Full position, but there's still no excuse. I'm sure that Tyler Steyer can't quite believe it. Well, he's not the only one. A little stop shot, and you are on the hill. I'm not really sure what Tyler's looking at here. You can see enough of this ball to spin the cue ball around, surely. this and you can see it just look at the corner of the screen he looks he looks in a bad old place there how much is it gonna cost him now is it gonna cost him this match Seventy-three days to go before Christmas, and there, Tyler Steyer happily accepting a seven-ball gift. It should have been, for all intents and purposes, eight-five Gorst. It is seven-six, and this extraordinary match has just got a little tighter and even more tense. Four-two, Yian Chua over Eklund Kachi on table two. You can see all of the table to action throughout the day on the Matrim Pool YouTube channel. Bradislav Babica, he's 4 1 up on Oscar Dominguez. Mario He, 5 3 up on Chris Reinholdt. 
matches between Ralph Suke and Francisco Sanchez Ruiz. Also Roberto Gomez and Wu Kun Lin and Victor Zielinski and John Mora are in their very early stages on the outside tables. Omar Al Shaheen leads Greg Hogue 2 1. Hogue could be a possible <laughs> Moscow Nike player, you know, because he came here sixth in their rankings. If he could win that match and go deep here, who knows? He could be a really surprise inclusion. Mark Bosch 2 1 upon Loho Sum, and Marcel Price from Wales and Thomas Kaplan from Poland have just begun. Again, nine ball, he's made the nine ball. Fed or Ghost has been double punished for missing that seven. Ghost should have been 8-5 up with the break. Now it's 7-7 seven, seven after missing the seven. <laughs> Look at the expression. <laughs> you see, this year has been for Fedor Gorscht all about winning. They say winning is a habit. Well, maybe that habit is about to be broken here. What a turnaround. Maybe two, three minutes after he was looking almost certain to be on the hill. It's now 7-7 seven, seven, and of course the advantage lies with Steyer because in rack 15 he gets to break. That by the way is the eighth golden break on table one this week and I'm sure it's not going to be the last. We've seen a couple of golden breaks to complete victories. Well, I'm pretty certain Ghost hope it's the last in this match but regardless of the golden break the whole point is he's breaking so good he's putting the one in the side time and time again he can pot this Phil he can pot this in the top right corner yes and one four and six have already been removed scenes here we've had some drama so far today we really have the crowd are all around them two centre tables it's only going to get better we've got Shane versus Kazakas next over on table two as well coming up will be Skylar Woodward and Chang Jung Lin was living dangerously with that cue ball it really was look at this good pot that's undeniable the white though catching the jaws of the top pocket but position on the three is retained yeah I mean regardless of what goes on now in this match golden breaks a bit fortunate with the cue ball there of course we'll just keep thinking about that seven ball should have been eight five up Should have been eight five up with the break, Phil. Now we're, we're four balls away from seeing Tyler Steyer being on the hill with the break. He's sitting there praying for an opportunity to get back to the table. But you can't see that coming in this rack.
I have to say, in my opinion, Steyer has been the better player. He spotted more balls. He certainly had more control of the break-off. And now he's on the brink of leading. And leading for the first time in the match. He was 2-0 down. He was 5-2 down. 6-3 and 7-5. But now with three racks in succession, Tyler Steyer, the man from Wisconsin, leads Fedor Gorscht 8-7. And Gorscht knows that his opponent is on the hill breaking. Two more results for you. Xi Chia Chen has beaten Jose Alberto Delgado 9-7. And also Mustafa Alner. He defeated the youngster from Germany, Moritz Neuhausen, 9 6. Eklund Kachis, 4 3 down against Johan Schuur on table two. Ralph Suke, 53 years of age, Ralph. I'd love to see him do well here. One of my favourite players. He leads Francisco Sanchez Ruiz, 2 0. Greg Hogue, 3 2 up on Omar Al Shaheen. Mark Beisterbosch, his break-off is blistering. He leads Loho Sum 4-1. It's the break, isn't it? It's the break-off. He's broke. Unbelievable in this match. And he has a shot at this too, I believe. on the break you can see from that graphic three times more efficient in terms of potting balls with his break than Gorscht he's just making sure he doesn't do anything silly the two ball goes can't really roll forward to play the red three in the bottom left corner. He's got too much of a steep angle. He's just looking at pulling the cue ball back to play the three in the top left. Tricky opening shot this. He's not got a lot of room for error. It's a little short of pace, but it's one good shot into the top corner. The US Moscone Cup captain is watching the action on our monitors over our shoulders. And to say he's watching intently would be an understatement. Massive implications. ball needs to bump the seven it's okay it is okay and now Gorst must be fearing the worst what a turnaround and Gorst might well be having nightmares about that seven down the rail when he was on the verge of leading 8-5. Yeah, incredible, Phil. All he's got to do is play a little stop shot, and he's on the hill. He decides to draw the cue ball back, and that caused the miss. And that's OK. Look at the balls. This is, this is pretty much unmissable. And this is why, Carl, I was talking up all the way through the match, and indeed at other tournaments I've done it. Tyler Steyer's Moscone Cup credentials. He's a fighter. 
I've said it before in this match, and I'll say it again. And that's his wife, Margarita Fefalova. Steyer now. Just willing these balls to enter the pockets. Yep, he's got an angle. He's perfect here. He just, you know, looking at these balls, it just can't go wrong, can it? Anywhere back out into the centre of the table. He's going to be good enough. Is the winning machine of 2022 Fedor Korscht about to malfunction? As I said before, he's won from Arizona to Delaware, from Indiana to Nevada, and plenty of other states as well. But in the big one, is he about to come a cropper? Gregory Hogue, 4 2 up on Omar Al Shaheen. All eyes, though, are on this. What a moment for Tyler Steyer. Two balls away from a victory over Gorst. Gorst has been spoke about a lot this year, been maybe one of the best players, and who'd have thought missing that seven would cost Gorst this match? That's what it means to take.